My daughter, age 12, told me she was a girl at two years old, a week after her second birthday. I kind of assumed she was playing pretend, but after a year of it incessantly, I realized it was something more. By the time she was three and a half, she had fully transitioned in every way she could at that age, and we haven't looked back since. My cousin recently got married. His wife and her family did not know us when my daughter was younger, and I presume my cousin never thought to mention it. Anyway, we were at their house. She has two daughters from a previous marriage, and her younger sister spent a lot of time here, so the girls were playing. My daughter excused herself to the bathroom, and I guess my cousin's stepdaughter followed her up. Anyway, about two minutes later, we hear my daughter yell before the littler one runs downstairs and announces to the whole room that my daughter has a penis. I obviously run straight up to my daughter, who's in tears. Essentially, she was desperate and hadn't locked the door. Littler one barged in and saw her. My daughter pees sitting down and the toilet faces the door, so it was kind of obvious. Cousin's wife comes up after me, asks me what was going on. I explain her daughter had barged into the bathroom when my daughter was peeing, and she asked if my daughter was secretly a boy, which obviously upset my daughter even more. We left without me answering any of their questions. It was a day of cuddles following that, with my phone turned off. My cousin showed up to my door and said his wife had kicked him out after he stated he wouldn't share my daughter's private information. I thanked him and decided to deal with the situation. My daughter had given permission to tell them, but I worked on a sort of protective force first, called my two older sisters, one of which is married to a trans woman, to come over and stay with my baby while I dealt with everything. She had a good night with them. Anyway, the incident had reached a lot of people, and I had an influx of angry people saying I deceived them, and now they couldn't trust me in case I lied about anything else. Essentially, I made a public post explaining that my daughter is transgender, came out at a young age, and that I didn't lie to anyone. She's a girl, regardless of what genitals she has. No one took it particularly well, besides the people who already knew. Now, I'm not sure if keeping it a secret was the best way to go about things, seeing how negatively it affected everything. I feel bad for my daughter and the family this has negatively affected. I will not apologize for not telling them. I don't feel like an apology is owed. But I still don't know if I was necessarily in the right for keeping in secret. Now the top comments. As an autistic adult, I can assure you that doesn't change the situation at all. You are not the a-hole, and the young cousin still needs to learn this lesson. The fact that she is likely autistic is important and relevant because it's important not to shame her. You're right that she probably struggles with understanding boundaries and social rules, and she shouldn't necessarily be punished or shamed for what she did. But as I have often noted here, developmentally delayed doesn't mean developmentally stagnant. As autistics, we are absolutely capable of learning and growing, and because of our struggles, that means giving us lots of information early and often to help us with that. The cousin who came into the bathroom needs to be set down and gently but firmly told about privacy, about consent and respect, and that just as she likely enjoys having private time and space to herself sometimes, very big among easily overloaded autistics. So do other people. And when people go to the bathroom is a private time and space. Closed doors means knocking, especially with bathrooms, and waiting for permission even if we don't want to. And we don't talk about people's bodies because those are private spaces as well and it is hurtful even if we don't mean it to be. None of this is difficult to understand, and questions can be answered but it is crucial that it be addressed promptly. The cousin doesn't have to be ashamed or punished, but she does need to be taught not to do this anymore, and her being autistic is not an excuse not to do this. It's a reason why it needs to be done. Not the a-hole. First of all, you are proof that not all heroes wear capes. You are a wonderful parent and deserve all the credit in the world for supporting your daughter. Second, you never deceived anyone. Your daughter is your daughter. This is a fact. As far as whether to reveal whether or not she is transgender, that is entirely up to her. You never out someone without their permission, which, incidentally, is what your family has now done. By accusing you of not being trustworthy, they have actually proven that they cannot be trusted. Do not apologize for not telling them. You were 100% correct not telling them about it. 
If anything, their reaction proves that you were correct in not telling them. I'm a 19-year-old girl and I've been living alone for a year. Right after I turned 18, I started looking for places to move due to the situation at home. At my mom's house, there was living me, my mom, 39, my stepdad, 43, and their two kids who are 13 and 5. My stepdad and mom have been together since I was two, but he never took on the role of a dad for me, which I don't really care about. These problems started when I was 15, when my mom started to ask me to pay for my own medication, transports to school, and other things that I needed. It only grew from there. After I turned 16, I started dating my ex-boyfriend, whose mom needed an assistant because of her disability. I loved to help, so she would schedule me as her assistant on days that her other assistants were taking their vacations or days off. The pay was good and over the two years of us being together, I gathered quite a nice amount of money to be able to move out and start a life for myself. My mom saw this as an opportunity to get money from me. You see, when my mom was pregnant with my youngest sister, she started studying. She never actually ended up going back to work until my sister was three, so she didn't have a lot of extra money. Over the years, I've had to pay the phone bills of my whole family so that they wouldn't be shut off. Food for all of us, my sister's medicine, car payments, and sometimes she wouldn't even give me a reason why she borrowed money. For the most part, I wanted to help because I didn't want my sisters to go hungry or sick. The worst things she borrowed money from me were an Apple Watch and eyelash extensions. I doubt my mom has even told my stepdad about all the money she has borrowed from me. Now, after a year of living alone and refusing to loan any more money to my mom, she has basically cut me out completely. In the past month, I've spoken to her maybe an hour at maximum. From 2019 to 2022, she has borrowed over $1,600 from me, from which she still owes me $550. That would cover a month's rent for me. And the biggest thing she hasn't paid me back is the Apple Watch, which she was supposed to pay back after she got her other watch sold. A few months later, I found out she sold it but never gave me any of the money. I have grown more and more upset with her after finding out that she would also borrow money from my biological dad and her parents for the same things she borrowed money from me. I have come really close to sending her all the information about the money she still owes me, but I doubt she would even acknowledge it. That's why I want to know, Reddit. Would I be the a-hole if I sent the information to both my mom and stepdad so I could finally get the money I'm owed? Now the top comments. Not the a-hole, but kiss that money goodbye and get on with your life. I know for a fact that my aunt left me some money in her will and that my cousin took that money. But I haven't seen him since, and if that's all it cost me to get rid of that jerk, I feel like I got off cheap. Call it an expensive lesson, and keep in mind that you will never, ever get anything back if you give it to her. So stop giving her things. Not the a-hole. Do it. Straight up confront her or ask her about it. Find receipts too. What do you have to lose? She's already practically cut you out for not giving her more. You worked hard for that money and were financially smart. She didn't use your money for your sister. She used your sister to get money from you. F her. Taking money from your own daughter who worked hard for it to buy an Apple Watch and eyelash extensions is a whole next level of narcissistic, selfish parent. I'm sorry, but F her. My daughter is 21 and lives in another city for university. She's here for the holidays for two weeks, and since all her friends are still at their universities, she has no one to hang out with. But she's not bothered by that since she wanted to spend time with her family, aka us. Now, problem is, all of us are sick. Not COVID, just flu. We got tested. And so we still stay in our rooms. But two days ago, we went to a family friend's wedding, which is out of the city, and daughter didn't join. But other than that, we've been home. Daughter has been bored this entire week, saying she's watched over 50 episodes of her show and she's tired and wants to do something else with us. I tried to spend time with her by sitting an hour or two with her, but that's it. Because I really can't do anything else, I'm just tired. However, tonight daughter came to me and said she wanted to drive to the store and get some snacks so she could watch a movie and asked if I could come with her. The store is 5 minutes away, but I wasn't up to it so I said no, ask your brother. Her brother is perfectly fine, no flu. A while later she came back saying he said no and asked if she could just drive by herself since it's so close. 
and shouldn't be a big deal since she has a license and it's only 6.30 p.m. I still said no, which she got angry and said it's not fair that we don't spend any time with her and she's been trapped at home because we're sick and that it must not even be serious since we attended a wedding that's outside our city and yet I won't go to a store that's five minutes away. I asked her to go to her room and calm down, but she hasn't talked to me since. So, Reddit, am I the a-hole? Now the top comments. Good grief, yes, you're the a-hole. Why won't you let your daughter drive alone at night? She's 21 for crying out loud, not 16. She is capable of living a whole life away from you for university, but when she's back in your house, she has to abide by your ridiculous rules because you refuse to realize she's an adult. Also, she has a point about the wedding. You're the a-hole for going to a wedding while sick in the first place. You're the a-hole for claiming to be too sick to spend time with your daughter. And you're the a-hole for not realizing how lucky you are that she still wants to spend time with you. You're the a-hole. You don't let your adult daughter drive by herself at 6.30 p.m. You'll travel to a wedding while having flu, but you won't spend any time with your daughter while she's in your house. When she brings both of these things up, you send her to her room like she's 10 years old. And you wonder why she's not talking to you? Can you honestly not see how much of an a-hole you're being here? Update. Okay, I get it. I'm the a-hole. To answer some other common questions. No, my daughter doesn't do drugs or alcohol. She hates addiction because her father is an alcoholic. So she's never under the influence. I don't know if she drives alone at night while in university because we've never talked about that. But I now know that she probably does. She doesn't have any restrictions on herself in the other city, but we made sure that she knew that while she's here, she will respect our rules, which she does. Although she's usually a bit whiny about them. I'll apologize to her and let her know that she can go. Thank you all for your judgment. I'll try my best not to be a helicopter parent anymore. I, female 28, have been dating my fiancé, Ryan, male 36, for three years. We have been living together for one year and we are engaged for eight months. I am currently six months pregnant. Ryan has a six-year-old son, James, from his previous marriage, and he and his ex share custody for James. So James stays with his father, and now me since I moved in, for one week, then spends a week with his mother and her husband, and so on. James is a sweet little boy and we have a wonderful relationship. He knows that I'm not his mother and I will never try to take her place. But so far, living together has worked quite well. So last Saturday, I was home with James while Ryan was at work, and James was taking a nap in his room while I was watching a movie in our bedroom. James came to me and asked if he could climb to bed with me, as he had had a nightmare and was afraid to stay alone in his room. I said, sure. He climbed on his father's side of the bed and fell asleep five minutes later. Ryan came home one hour later and found us both asleep on the bed with two dogs, and thought it was adorable, so he took a picture. Fast forward a couple of days. James's mom comes to pick him up from our house and asks him to go to the car so she can speak with us. She proceeds to tell us how inappropriate it was for me to let a young boy in the bed and cuddle with him while he was asleep. Which we didn't. When none of his parents were home. Apparently, Ryan's sister showed her the photo thinking she would be happy that her son and I had a nice relationship. She also said that she and her husband find how touchy I am with James very inappropriate and that they'll even consider applying for full custody. I don't know if they will, but I'm literally shaking as I'm writing these. James is obsessed with my baby bump. He's generally a very cuddy child, but lately he wants to put his little head on my belly for hours and listen to his baby sister. I love kids and I would never refuse to hug my soon-to-be stepson. It never crossed my mind that this would be considered inappropriate. I used to teach and my students would hug me all the time and none of their parents seemed to mind. The rest of the family is on our side, but I wanted an unbiased opinion. So am I the a-hole for letting my stepson into our bed and occasionally hugging him and being affectionate with him? As a fellow pregnant bonus mom, I'd say not the a-hole. My stepson is five and he does the same thing. He's always hugging my belly and talking to his little brother, and his mom encourages it. I think James's mom might be insecure in the fact that you're in his life and giving him a sibling. That was my problem for a while, but I sat down with her and told her, I'm not trying to take your spot in his life. You're his mom and we all know that. I'm just trying to build a different relationship with him. I have a stepdad and he's become my best friend. That's all I want with him. 
basically reassuring her that I'm not trying to steal her son. But for sure not the a-hole. He's six. Would she expect Ryan to flip out if the roles were reversed and James went to his mom's husband and did the same? I'm scared to sleep alone, but I trust you enough to keep me safe. Can I lay with you? This is one of those things where every parent has different boundaries. From my perspective, not the a-hole. He fell asleep next to you. I don't see the harm in that. My girls have fallen asleep next to stepmom countless times and are physically affectionate. Cuddles, hugs, kisses. I'm thankful they have a loving mother at dad's house. I can't imagine being upset by this. But I'm not every mom. As for now, to navigate it going forward, I just don't know. Good luck and I hope dad has a lawyer just in case.